Thank you. Thank you, Cam. No, mine was missing AE317. Or three which, one seven. Yeah, which isn't yes. even on my book. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, so you have to go to your. <laughs> okay. um, so, okay. for, for me, it's AE 317. this new guy, but I basically went to his office and, um, and he sorted out for me. But if you send them an email, it might take a while. I would, I would find out where they are. So, like, right after the spot, go over there. Did they, like, leave there and you have to take an extra? No, it's basically for some reason when they change the like the prerequisite requirements for a class, um, they don't they don't have account for the fact that most of the students are actually on older flowcharts. So yeah, so they affect the, you can only register for it if it's still matching like the current flowchart. But our flowchart is 2019 Be on is your registration date when? Yeah, yeah, but they change the thing. Some kind of homework to do. I should be more than that. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. 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 So, well, like there are those requirements for like the amount of credits. So, yeah, it's included in one semester, semester, semester assuming that you have to. Yeah. So, yeah. one semester, it's like I'm always like halfway back, and then the other semester, I'm full. So, I think this is the one I'm full. So, I kind of don't know. Okay. But like, can I register for walls? I don't like on an engineer. Did we do this? Uh, yeah. I just was saying yeah. No, right? Not yet. Uh, I don't know. Um, that's part of B two. Yeah, we did. We so did page 12. Voting control. Um, I but not page 13. Oh, that's be a pain. Oh, you have to well, no, you don't, but that's going to be a pain. Do we even have to take it seriously? No, they added it this year. Like, is it like my parents? Yeah. I mean, I understand. If they added it, it makes sense. But like, what is it about? Like mechanics. The mechanics of flight. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Ask Doctor H. You would know. Do you know what the new flight mechanics course is about? Three seventeen. Three seventeen. Have you heard any of these flight performance? Uh, flight mechanics and performance, performance, right? right? Yeah. I. I think I know that class. Oh no, because it's a new class and we're just wondering. It's what a new was. class. I I taught last semester. Or it's new to our flow chart. It's new to the flow chart, I think. New to the flow chart? Yeah. We have, yeah. It's not on the like the twenty nineteen. Yeah, those are cross material. I developed. Oh, what do you mean? Me. There you go. Yes, I love, yes. Actually, yeah. Just send them out. Yeah, because I can't get it in our flow chart. Yeah. I love this little big word. He has a point. Yeah. Honestly, I yeah, this is uh, flight max and performance. It basically covers aero and first of all aero and close to high speed. Uh, this, yeah, this is wings and airplane. This is also high speed aero. Then what's that? Unit C is unit C is performance. Uh, equation motion, grinds, cron takeoff, V and diagram, performance analysis, other things. And also, unit D is uh, uh, stability and control, longitude, no lateral direction. Yeah. That's that's uh, right. Sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, who's teaching? No, uh, Chris Bennett. Who's uh, teaching? Traub should be teaching. I don't know who's teaching it. Uh, Dr. Traub is class right now. Okay. okay. Oh, sorry. Or what? Dr. Running is structures guy, not here. Oh, no, for change. stability and control or uh, this? This is right, mate. Yeah. A317. Are you asking who's teaching? Uh, yeah, that's Dr. Chris Bennett, isn't it? I believe it is. That sounds yeah. more already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same, same material I, I gave it to him. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> do you want to pre-study before next semester? One more time. Do you want do you want to take a look at material and study and be ready for it? Yeah, sure. I can give it. We don't have to take it. It's not a requirement. It's not a requirement. For some yeah. reason. Oh. We made it a requirement. Well, if you're an airplane yeah. person, yeah, you see it. Yeah, that's right. I feel like I feel like to know. But yeah. I feel like to have it. Yeah. If well, if you if you call yourself airplane person without taking this class, no. <laughs> blame the flowchart people. Yeah, blame the flowchart oh, people. Uh, the our year's flowchart uh -huh. makes it so that we don't have to take 317 uh -huh. to go to experimentals. Mm -hmm. But uh, they made it like required. Now they made it for this. Year. That means you should probably take it. Yeah, that's yeah. the plan. You know, the this is every little right airplane university, right? No. This is what we do the best. <laughs> so you should write next semester by the kind of flow. I might do it. Okay. Uh, I completely forgot to take the uh, homework assignment. You need to I'm taking right now, but uh, it's pain free slow. This, this laptop is piece of crap. I just bought it like really cheap, but not kind of I mean, it's a Dell with the extra. You just bought it or you didn't buy it? Hey, some hate eh? this, this laptop? Yeah. I never buy a laptop new. Mine is. I usually buy it in eBay for the people who graduated trying to literally sell the laptop in any money. Then I open up the case and up the shirt, but I, I never buy anything. I'm cheap. I think you know that. Okay. So I'm taking your uh, homework right now. Just a minute. Any other question? So if you are asking my advice, either taking or not taking 317, if you call yourself every person, you should probably take it. It's a lot of content you, you need to know. If you want to design airplanes, this is this is probably must have kind of very very good. I, I mean I shouldn't say that because I'm just like creating content, but uh, it's it covers essentially everything for everyone. Appreciate <laughs> 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 16 or 32. Mm -hmm. I just want 32. I think, yeah. I think it's 16, but at some point I'll probably have no options. Yeah. It's harder to upgrade laptops. It's not that bad. bad. It's not that bad. I've, it's a lot easier. I've upgraded. I had a free uh, MDMA slot, so I just put up 500 gigs in that, so I ran out of uh, M.2 as a state, you mean? Uh, no, the and the BME, like the little, like this one. I have this all. Yeah, on like the motherboard? Yeah. yeah, that's an MVME uh, M.2 sound for uh, M.2 SSD. All right, so let's, let's take a look at. The ones that are in the motherboard and unscrew and then you Let's take a look at the. Yeah, that's the M.2 SSD. Oh, so we have yeah. new update so now. The only update is today is the whole one. Do I completely forgot to take it once again? I apologize. I. Don't apologize. Yeah, I, I'm going to do it. I, I take it as soon as possible anyways, but any question? Okay. Unit B1 is uh, basic mathematics. Uh, everything is very essential. Uh, okay, Unit B1. That's a mathematics. Everything is essential. In other words, I'm going to use those mathematical concepts Throughout Uni B2, B3, B4, okay. Uh, none of them is like a trivial information. Uh, please go back in Uni B1. Um, especially for those who actually have a logic reaction against mass, uh, you don't have to have a logic reaction. Uh, I guess you have to understand conceptually why do we need to integrate, why do we need to differentiate? That's probably originating from that because. Uh, it's a really physical thing. Differentiation is a really physical thing, and the integration is also physical thing. In other words, when you start using software, you actually do integration. Mathematical integration means that you are given piece, 
piece by piece me, uh, it's like a piece by piece information given. Like, well, okay, this cross section, I know that I know all the details, and then you use that here. And the other cross section, I know all the details. I use that here. I'm going to linearly connecting and making the surface called the wing. You can basically predict the wing performance by integrating. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Okay. And mathematics is quite important. So today, we stopped at uh, ideal flow analysis. Okay, let's just uh, take a look at once again. So ideal flow means our motivation is we want to simplify our equation. Equation is as simple as possible. That means every equation we're going to deal with in this unit B2 and B3B4, your project, those are all algebraic. Algebraic equation is something you want to deal with. Okay? Differential equation and then other different forms, non-algebraic forms of mathematics, you can never do it by hand. That means you have to somehow approximate it. Okay? You can never find out the solution of differential equation. You only do approximation. Computational fluid dynamics is not actually solving the equation. It's approximating the equation. It's called simulation. Simulation is approximation. You will never get the real result. You will approximate. Approximation is, okay, if you only have like small tiny computer just like your laptop, that's the only thing you have. So the simulation of the shape, it could be, okay, I'm going to simulate this kind of shape. But I can only represent using like one, two, three, four, five, or six, seven, eight, nine panels. Is it equal to each other? Uh, kind of similar, but it's not the same thing. So uh, if you have a bigger computer, you can use like 100 panels instead, 1,000 panels, medium panels, and then you can go closer and closer and closer to something you are looking for. It is not a solution at all, it's a simulation, okay? That's, uh, that's the bottom line of finite element method, which is structural analysis, computational fluid dynamics. Everything you call that simulation-based analysis is you're going to actually approximate it. That's where the meshing comes in, meshing, right? We talked about meshing. So this is a flow field meshing. Flow field meshing is one of the idea that you're going to approximate to determine, and, and then uh, you're going to uh, describe the flow field properties using meshing means you're not really solving everything. You're going to basically showing those are the nodal points I'm going to compute the properties, and then those are the things we are going to use to represent the flow field. Is it the real flow field? Not really, but I suppose if you have a very, very, very fine mesh, okay, you're going to fairly accurately represent the flow field. Okay, and that's the whole idea. Now, when you do finite element method, you're going to make a mesh. Okay, you can use very coarse mesh or very, very, very fine mesh to represent the same thing. One is much more cross and more accurate. Okay. So, welcome to numerical analysis 101. This is not considered computational fluid dynamics. If you're interested, uh, I'm willing to teach the class. It's supposed to be once a year, it never happened. So it's usually directed study or independent studies. Okay. Computational fluid, of course, you have to successfully understand past this class. Okay. So in last class, we looked at one of the governing equations. This is a governing equation of X momentum, substantial derivative form. Substantial derivative form uses the field concept. That means you are going to discretize the flow field, like a meshing flow field. Okay. And then I don't know how many meshing resolution you can afford out of your small tiny puny computer. But let's say you have thousand by thousand meshing to represent this flow field. Okay, then you're going to have one thousand by one thousand node points to represent your computed data. Okay, that's called flow field representation. Okay. 
So now substantial derivative form covers both. At each location, velocity is a function of time if it's unsteady flow. Even it is steady flow field, you have a velocity as a function position also. So one is called local variable. The other one is called convective variable. Convective. Convective means that even though steady state flow field, you have a variation okay, of the property within a different position in your flow field. In other words, velocity here, velocity there will be different because simply because it's a different positions. Even though this is a steady state, you have a variation of velocity, pressure, density, whatever, Temper temperature may not because we purposely not going to apply energy equations. So temperature is constant. In other words, this is uh, isosomal profile. Low speed aerodynamics is inherently isosomal profile. Okay. Anyways, so starting from here, of course, you have to pick up governing equation, no assumption, no nothing. This actually governs everything. Substantial derivative form. Now, of course, as usual, you're going to simplify applying one at a time assumptions. Okay. So that's what we did in unit A3. Okay. Assumption steady flow, first assumption. Assumption implicit, second assumption maybe. Zero body force, third assumption. Out of those three assumptions, you're going to have Euler's equation. Now Euler's equation could be described in each direction of 3D coordinate space. It could be X and Y and Z Euler equations, Euler's equation. You can of course have R and theta and Z, three-dimensional cylindrical coordinate system based Euler's equation. Uh, do you want to derive that kind of stuff in exam? Oh, that could be interesting. Please not. Please not. Okay, I'm not going to do that. In other words, exam from now on, I'm going to give you a program only if I talked about or covered in homework or quiz. That's the only problem. I always do. Yeah. I'm not going to create any strange new problem just for the exam. No, I know. I'm not going to do it. Homework and quiz and uh, in class example. In class, well. ex in class example is basis for homework. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. Yep. That's me. I'm not, I'm not going to try to frank anybody. People just frank themselves. That's the fact. Anyways, uh, next step is, of course, you're going to apply number four assumption, incompressible. This is not very good assumption. Less than 0 0.3 Mach number. This is always attached to the condition. And then you're going to have Euler's equation. No, no. Bernoulli's equation, right? Now, Bernoulli's equation, by the way, it could have a one of the variants of Bernoulli's equation, something called energy equation. That means instead of incompressible, you are going to bring in first of thermodynamics and isentropic flow, uh, perfect gas. Those are the assumptions. Instead of incompressible, you're going to have another version of Bernoulli. That's called energy equation. But low speed aerodynamics, typically, we don't even consider energy equation. Right? So that's energy equation you deal with in unit A3. Okay? And that's also a different version of Bernoulli for high speed. As long as you're talking about low speed, temperature doesn't change at all in the flow field. Okay? Question? And why are we trying to write the energy for you for the ideal flow? Oh, yes. Where is the energy for? The CP, yeah. isn't that? CP is equal to 1. No! no. This is branch and coefficient. CP oh. is lower case. This is capital and lower case. Oh. This, is, this is specific heat ratio. This oh. is pressure. Pressure coefficient. Oh. Okay, be careful. Be careful. This is pressure coefficient. Actually, I appreciate your question because this is actually a common mistake. If you make that kind of mistake in measuring exam, you're dead, bro. Okay, <laughs> of course. Because that's fundamentally very wrong. <laughs> I'm going to be vicious, Rita. Lots of points out. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, thank you. Okay. okay, so that is number four assumption. And then fifth assumption, this is uh, because of uh, implicit, you can mathematically simplify flow field being irrotational. Then we discovered that, hey, this is the equation of ideal flow. Or this is the equation for potential flow field. 
Now, potential flow field, what is the meaning of this potential flow field? The name, anybody? Why we call this potential flow? Potential flow field or ideal flow field. Why is that? Pop quiz. Why is that? Go ahead. Because it's all those other components have to exist, but that doesn't really exist in nature. It's just an ideal, ideal mm. test, mm. testing environment. Actually, much simpler than that. Purely mathematical. This is called potential flow field. Why? Go ahead. It's irrotational. Irrotational, yeah. If it's irrotational, why is it called potential flow? Because you can define velocity potential. That's why. Oh. That's the only reason. So this is a flow field because it's irrotational. You can actually define velocity potential for such a field, flow field. That's why it's called potential flow field. So again, uh, this assumption five is about the same in physical meaning of number two assumption in BISID. However, we want to differentiate because one actually comes up with very special meaning. Number five, irrotational flow field. Actually, mathematically speaking, you can now define velocity potential for the flow field. This is called ideal flow or potential flow, either way, okay? Now, if such a thing exists, potential flow field, you can define using your, using your MATLAB, you can define, hey, this is my velocity field or velocity, well, this is my flow field. It looks like this is Cartesian. Suppose if your team chooses to go for Pora, this is my flow field. I'm not kidding. Some people, some team actually do that and don't even realize. It. If you keep using your polar coordinate, this is my flow field. And then within this flow field, you have a circular cross section here. Flow gets in, flow over it, but this is my flow field because you're using polar coordinate. If you're using this kind of flow field, this is inherently x and y Cartesian, and you have circular cylinder. Okay. But because you have a circular cylinder, you probably want to compute the flow field based on the r and theta within this Cartesian. So you have coordinate transformation always happens. Keep track of that, okay? Be careful about. So anyways, so this is ideal flow or potential flow field. Pressure and velocity are related on one-on-one -on -one relationship. This is a purely, in a, in a pure mathematical sense, Pressure velocity coupling. Let me just write it down here. This is called pressure velocity coupling. This is not Bernoulli's equation. This is called pressure velocity coupling equation. Because it exists, doesn't it? Because this actually is true everywhere in the ideal flow field. Okay? So in such a flow field, this is such a flow field, okay? We're gonna play with it right now. I'm just showing you. So this is such a flow field. This is ideal flow field. Anyways, two dimensional, it looks like, okay. So everything you can draw here on the sketch is purely based on mass, mathematical function, and you can construct flow field using this mathematical 2D data field. This is mathematical 2D data field. Because everything mass, this is ideal flow. So let's say if you do you want to do the same thing using your MATLAB, yes, you can do it. But I have my own special software. I basically made it when I was a grad student. So I'm using it. This is called Ideal Flow Machine 4.0. <laughs> I'm going to use it later, just a demo. Too bad you can't use it. You have to use your MATLAB to do the same thing. Okay, that's your project, project 2A and 2B. It's going to be a lot of fun, believe me. If you know what you're doing, it's a lot of fun. If you have no clue, it's a hell. That's what I have. Sounds about right. That's pretty much all the engineering is all about, but the arrow is special. If you have no clue, it's a hell. I have no idea what. Is this like even English? Probably not, I don't know. Okay, so. Ideal flow means, okay, so, well, let's say this is circular cylinder flow is incoming, okay? 
typically uniform flow with magnitude B infinity incoming. Then let's just choose maybe one streamline. Okay, so this is a streamline. Okay, and then this is, I don't know, uh, this is, let's say, well, location one, this is location infinity, the heck, I don't care about streamline, this is location two, <laughs> because I don't care about streamline anymore, okay, let's just apply this equation, p plus one half rho b squared is constant everywhere, right? So p infinity plus one half rho. Rho what? Well, rho is rho. It's constant, incompressible, okay? Velocity at location infinity is b infinity, which is equal to p1 plus one half rho. Rho is what? No, it's constant, okay. Velocity at location one is B1. Magnitude, okay. Is equal to P2 plus one half rho. B2 square is equal to just about any location. P plus one half rho B square. Just about any random location is fine. At any random location, pressure is P. Velocity is B, right? Okay, I'm running out of time, sorry. So let's just find out pressure coefficient then from here, CP, what's CP? Somebody please remember the definition of CP. One minus B or something. No, no, that's, that's what you're gonna get. What is your uh, original <laughs> definition of CP? Original definition. Yeah? CP is a pressure coefficient. P, uh, ah, P. P minus P infinity over Q. Oh, Q, Q. Okay. P, 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 what? P minus P infinity. P minus P infinity. Divided by? Q infinity. Q infinity. Huh, okay. So what is P minus P infinity is? This is, looks like one half, one half, no, oh, sorry. Isn't it just going to be here? One half, well, between those two. So let's say between those two relationship, what is P minus B infinity is? Um, uh, one half rho, what? B, B, B infinity square minus B square, right? What is Q infinity? Wouldn't it be B squared minus B infinity yeah. squared? Why? Because you have P and E, you have P minus oh. P infinity. Ah, P minus yeah. P infinity, P minus P infinity is one half, okay. is equal to, oh, B minus, huh? Yeah, that's being B minus. Sorry, B yeah. minus, okay, so opposite, sorry. Is it opposite, that's what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. B minus B infinity square. No. Is that no, 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 Okay. What is Q infinity? Of course, it's one half rho B infinity square. Isn't that correct? One half rho cancels. What is the result? This is gonna one be minus B, uh, B, B. Yeah, B infinity square minus B square over B infinity square, right? Over B infinity square. That's right, so this is one minus B over B infinity square, isn't it? So this whole thing is this, okay? So this is CP, pressure coefficient distribution without, within ideal flow field is 
And tiet is just a pure function velocity. So B infinity is a free stream velocity here. Let's say velocity right here is this much value B. Can you compute CP here? Yes. yes. Sure. sure. Suppose if the velocity right here on the surface is B, can you determine CP here? Yes, you can. So that means over any location, it could possibly on the surface of the body, you can compute pressure distribution, CP distribution. If you can determine pressure distribution over the surface, and then if it's not balanced in certain direction, what do you, what do you have? You, ha you can have a rift, you can have a drag, you can you have, have a force. force. You can have a force in certain direction. That's where we are moving from here. Right. So the value of CP is between zero and one. Mm -hmm. um, is not, that... not, the, not the between zero and one. It could be huge minus. Oh, okay. Mm. But, but is that... the maximum is one. Okay. In other words, stagnation point, when the velocity becomes zero, it is one, right? But it could be huge negative. Okay? Velocity could be much, much more than B infinity if you accelerate the flow field. That's going to be a negative value of CP. Okay, so you can have a negative value. However, when CP becomes zero, when B is equal to B, B over B infinity square is equal to one, when that kind of stuff happens, when the pressure P is equal to the B infinity, that happens. That's called static pole. Okay. So we're gonna find out those things. Don't worry too much about it. But it's a very basic concept of CP. Okay, go ahead. Uh, because you have uniform flow. Uh, this is uniform flow income. Yes. Yeah. Pretty stream. Infinity stupid. is the same for all streamlines. That that huh? word is uniform. So then. Uniform flow is incoming until it hits the body. Yeah, but once it meets the body. The flow need to adjust because of the presence of the body. So you are going to create the velocity variation, pressure variation also with it. Right? That's what you are going to analyze. Okay. Yeah, mathematically. Okay? So mathematically, you can analyze it. So this is mathematical data field. This is 100% mass. So I can play with it saying, I can draw a streamline of any magnitude, magnitude, I don't know, magnitude 10, maybe. I'm going to place it here. So now, free stream of magnitude 10 is placed up in the data field. Let's draw streamlines. I'm going to draw a streamline. What kind of streamline do you ex expect? Just, yeah, line. just a straight line like this. Oh. oh, wow. oh. This is a streamline of a uniform flow. Oh. Beautiful. Oh. Pretty cool. This is this is uniform flow. And then uh, this color masking is basically the magnitude of the velocity. Okay. And then you can actually create okay, well draw something new. How can, how can I do that? New flow. Okay, so how can I create the flow of a circular cylinder? Uh, it's just a sneak preview. You are going to pick up something called the doublet, okay, and then place it like minus 10 magnitude. Let's put it in the, this is the coordinate origin, x and y, 0 and 0, and then let's superimpose. Superimpose means you're going to add up Magnitude maybe five. Oh, this is a two solution superimposed. And then let's just draw a streamline. What kind of flow field is this? Ah, so too small. So I want to make it a little bit bigger, five and minus twenty ish. Let me just do a new flow. I'm going to draw double it of a bigger strength, maybe minus. Based in origin, and then I'm going to put free stream uh, magnitude maybe two. Left to right, let's draw streamline. Ah, looks like flow over circular cylinder. 
This is 100% mass. Question, go ahead. Yeah, what do you mean by, um, what do you mean by? Huh? What is this definition? What is it? No, the, the, the two. What do you mean by? Um, what do you mean by magnitude two? Or... You're gonna find out those things. So stay focused on. So we're gonna cover those kind of things. Solution of Laplace's equation by superposition. That's what we're gonna do. 100% pure mathematics. Trying to represent some kind of flow field. That's unit B3, unit B4. This is something you have to do using your math app. Stay focused on. Okay, so your question is very valid, but you have to figure out as, as we move on in unit B3, okay? So your question was what? Like, what do you mean by magnitude? Magnitude, yeah, magnitude. Magnitude of double, what's double? <laughs> magnitude of uniform, what do you mean? Stay focused on those, okay, go ahead. Uh, you can kind of see there's a line that doesn't curve away, uh, that one right there. Is that the stagnation point? This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right here, stagnation point. You're right. Oh, and then, ooh, very close to stuff. Oh yeah, here's the stagnation point. Okay. Not the <laughs> so you're going to draw this kind of thing using my app. Your project to A to B. Stay tuned. Okay. So what are we doing here? So this is a 2D data field. 2D data field means you are actually trying to solve a governing equation in 2D data field. What is the governing equation of this 2D data field uh, for those people who are very sleepy? Go ahead, try. Jen, <laughs> you okay? Yeah. What, what's the equation you're trying to solve? Laplace's equation. Let's take a look at Laplace's equation today. Okay, uh, if you are, if, you are, if your teammate is sleeping, I guess you probably probably sit next to that person and then maybe hit it with a, <laughs> with a wet towel or something. Because you need that teammate. Somebody need to really understand mathematics and concept. So, anyways, the process equation. Okay. So the process equation can be represented by Laplacian. However. Let's just derive Laplace's equation, okay? So first of all, I want to derive Laplace's equation. What is the Laplace's equation? This is the governing governing equation of ideal flow field, or sometimes called potential flow field, okay? And then uh, the process equation can be represented either in terms of phi or in terms of psi. Now, in this class, we probably choose this psi more often, screen function. But this is only 2D. But uh, physically, it makes more sense because if you're trying to draw line of constant value of psi, which is contour plot, that is streamlined. Okay, so that actually is going to make you kind of feel like, hey, this is, I'm dealing with flow field. Okay, the process equation can be applied for other like professions, like a magnetic field and other things, and those other times people may use velocity potential instead. Go ahead. Uh, are you saying that middle box is the governing equation or Laplace's equation is the governing equation? This is Laplace's equation in terms of feed. This is Laplace's equation in terms of psi. This is the starting point. Okay, so let's just derive Laplace's equation, okay? So Laplace's equation, like I said, you can derive multiple ways. One of the ways is, I'm going to cover it now, but uh, one of your homework assignment, you have to derive the other Laplace's equation. So this is the equation I'm going to derive right now. This is the equation you have to derive by yourself in homework which is kind of simple, okay? So let's begin with conservation of mass, differential form of conservation of mass. You can actually start with, with a, a substantial derivative. It's either, either one is fine, but the differential form. Let's assume this is the steady flow. 
So that means these slopes are steady. Okay. Incompressible means density constant. So starting from here, zero dt plus del dot rho b is equal to zero. Assumption steady and incompressible. You are going to actually simplify this equation into this form. Del dot B is equal to zero. Have you ever seen this? Mm -hmm. What's this? Rotation. Uh -huh. No. Uh, yeah. That's a curl. curl. This is, is this a curl? No. That's divergence. This is divergence. What is divergence? Uh, how much a flow is willing to either be a source or a sink. Oh, that's a good point. So if it's a real flow field, you're not going to have that kind of stuff. In other words, in engineering, uh, there's no single, single point that the flow is all, all of a sudden starts to happen. That's a divergence positive. There's a kitchen sink, flow is sucked right in like a black hole. That's a divergence negative. Both essentially violation continuity. So in actual physical flow field, that kind of thing cannot happen. That's called this. What do you call this? Divergence of a velocity field is zero. What do you call this? This is continuity. Yeah? Is that right? This, this is the definition of continuity. Divergence of the flow field is zero. It's called continuity. If the divergence is non-zero, it is a violation continuity. It's either black hole sink, or all of a sudden water passes, starts out from somewhere. Okay, mass can never be destroyed or created. That's called continuity. Okay, so divergence must be always zero, otherwise you're violating continuity. I actually have a very good video I wanted to show, but it takes like 30 minutes, so I don't want to. I'm going to post it, so if you're interested, you can watch it. They talk about divergence and curl. So anyways, this is something you have to do, it, first of all, as a part of the homework assignment. So this is actually a homework assignment. I just copied from homework assignment. So this is a starting point. So this is continuity by definition divergence equal to zero. So this actually leads you into the Laplace's equation. So, so far we used up two, two assumptions. One is a steady incompressible flow. Let's introduce third assumption. Can you guess? Irrotational. Irrotational, yes, you're right. If the flow field is irrotational, irrotational flow means if you take curl of a velocity field, it's going to be a zero vector. Okay. Now you can say if the flow field is irrotational, What is a great benefit? All velocities are equal. All velocities are zero? No, equal. Like, there's eh? no change in rotation. Eh? Velocity? <laughs> Anybody else? The curve is zero, yeah. It's only translational. Yeah, translational. There's no rotation transformation ah, that you have to deal with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that means you can say, <laughs> in, in this, it, in this it is uh, the other. Well, if it's not visit, you can never, well, you, you can define, you can define velocity potential function. This is the greatest benefit, velocity potential. This is the meaning of potential flow field, okay? Potential flow. Okay, what is velocity potential? Somebody please define it for me. What is the velocity potential? Velocity potential, what is it? Define it, please. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. That's the equipotential line. What is the phi equal to? What's the definition of phi, velocity potential?
So if you take a gradient of phi, it is going to represent velocity. This is the definition of velocity potential. Okay. Huh. So question, can you combine this and that? Perfect. Yes, let's combine. Well, actually, let's not use. Let's combine, uh, this is equation A. This is equation B. Let's combine A and B. What do you get? Del square phi equals zero. That's what you're going to get. So, del dot D, divergence must be equal to zero. If you plug in velocity is being del dot, del phi, it must be also equal to zero. What is del dot, del phi? This is del, del square. square e equal to zero. Have you ever seen this equation in some other class? Then oftentimes, this del square phi is defined as Laplacian phi is equal to zero. This triangle is Laplacian. Laplacian phi equal to zero. Okay? If this is 3D Cartesian, what kind of equation do you think this thing is? If it's 3D Cartesian, d square phi dx square plus d square phi dy square plus d square phi dz square is equal to zero. If it's 3D Cartesian. Okay? This is called the process equation. Have you ever seen this? Okay, so Laplace's equation, I derived it in class. Now, in one of your homework assignment, you have to derive the psi is equal to zero. Now, psi is a 2D function. That means if it's 2D Cartesian, d squared psi dx square plus d squared psi dy square is equal to zero. So this is two-dimensional, essentially. That's what the psi really is. Psi is a screen function, which is two-dimensional concept. In one of the homework assignments, you have to derive this. It's coming from a completely different way. And then I gave you a hint already for the homework, so you can do it. So let's just uh, conclude today's lecture. Laplace's equation. Laplace's equation is a governing equation of a potential flow field. So suppose in a potential flow field, as you saw, it's a two-dimensional data field you, de you, you, you define. And then you're going to create some kind of body inside of it and then superimpose uniform flow to the body. And then as the flow flows over it, you can compute the velocity, pressure, everything mathematically. That's called potential flow field analysis. That's unit B3, OK? Then you are going to do your uh, project phase two A and B for the project of a flow of a circular cylinder. Okay. Circular cylinder without spin and with spin, because if you spin the circular cylinder, you actually create the rift. Question mark? G square. Okay. G square. Yeah. Question. So for the homework when we're uh, getting del of so, uh, so well, we're going to find out. Uh, Isn't it just a similar thing? But it's not similar thing. It's a, it's a very different way of deriving the same equation. But you can do it. Okay. So, well, I couldn't finish up today. But uh, next class, we're going to finish up unit B2, get right into the B3. We are going to examine, by the way, ah, this is, please take a look at by yourself. If you examine this equation, what kind of equation? Is this? This is a partial differential equation, second order, and linear equation. So how do we solve this type of equation? 
we are going to use superposition of elementary potential long field solution. People actually solved this Laplace's equation in the past, and then there are lots of solutions already available. Uniform flow, as you saw, uh, source and sink, doublet, vortex flow. Those are all elementary flow solutions. We are going to superimpose. In other words, we combine those elementary solutions to construct the flow field. That's what we're going to do in unit B3. Okay, so please take a look at this page and be ready for unit B3. Okay, so today is Monday. That's correct. So starting from Wednesday, we are going to take a look at unit B3. So uh, you are going to actually work as a team okay, and start thinking about your project basically. Okay. Any question? All right. Have a great rest of the day. We don't see you back in Wednesday. Uh, sorry, uh, not back here. Sorry. Did, did you take a. Yeah, okay, thank you. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm not